Who here will be voting for governor this March 20th or maybe early voting for the state of Illinois? One, maybe a few people, hopefully. Well, I'll see how it turns out. A few months ago, if you were here, I gave a speech on the race for governor, mostly on the Democratic side, the Democratic primary. And in my speech, I pretty much said, um, as some of you know, politics is a hobby of mine. I ran for office way back when, a small office. But still, I'm not an expert. But the speech I gave a few months ago, I um, said pretty much, I went over the candidates, and it seemed to me and just about everyone else that this fellow J.B. Pritzker, who most of us know by now, billionaire J.B. Pritzker running for governor, that he pretty much had the race wrapped up. He was ahead in the polls, but he had 40%. There were, there's actually, I think, six candidates running, but really there's the top three candidates. He had 40%, and the other candidates had 15 and 10. And I was of the opinion he had pretty much kind of bought the election because he had spent his 30 or 40 million unions endorsed him. He got everyone on board. And uh, it seemed like Pritzker was going to be the nominee to go against Ron, or who was the Republican although he's being challenged by someone a little bit as well. But what happens, what's happened in the past few months, the unthinkable has happened. J.B. Pritzker has become vulnerable. The others running, Daniel Biss, Christopher Kennedy, actually have a chance to beat the billionaire Pritzker. Does anyone know why? No, Mark, why do you think? Pritzker, he made some comments that are really hurt. Right. But not only that, we all make comments that hurt ourselves, but we don't have another billionaire runner putting millions of dollars of commercials repeating those comments on TV for millions of people to see. And that's basically what happened because Ronner doesn't really want to face Pritzker in the general, general race. He spent millions of dollars putting TV ads of J.B. Pritzker being recorded with uh, our former Governor Blagojevich talking about who they should pick for when they were um, filling in the Senate seat, the vacant Senate seat, which ultimately got Blago sent to jail. But it, even though Pritzker didn't do anything illegal in the commercials, it just makes him look really bad, like he's just some behind the scenes guy. He's really not that sincere. And people started to think, do we really want this J.B. Pritzker billionaire fellow for governor? I mean, let's face it, what, why does he deserve to be governor? And many ordinary people, this was what was going through their mind. Now, of course, still, that doesn't mean the only way to beat a candidate is you have to have other good candidates. And the fact is, even though he was way ahead in the race, the two other candidates are pretty good. Daniel Biss, who I know a little bit, I know from when he first ran for state rep about 10 years ago and he became state senator, decided to run for governor. He's actually a very strong candidate. He's one of the top fundraisers in the state of Illinois. He's one of the top organizers in the state of Illinois. And basically, he has a good head on his shoulders. He's a former math uh, professor. And he's also a middle class guy. So like I said, he's raised money showing commercials that he's just a regular guy, he's kind of a middle of the road type of candidate, and his numbers have gone up a lot. Even Christopher Kennedy, who I said in my last speech, was kind of lame. I said he's a prickly fellow. <laughs> but the fact is, the Kennedy and Mystique, it still lives. Especially, just for example, the black community. They love Kennedy. For them, it's Kennedy or Pritzker. For a lot of older people, it's Kennedy. Even though Pritzker is maybe prickly, it doesn't matter. People vote with their emotion. Look what we got in the presidential election. Trump said a million stupid things, and he won the presidency. So the fact is, the race is heated up. Kennedy has also endorsed, been endorsed by the Sun-Times. So which brings us to today, Pritzker is still probably ahead, but the amazing things about elections is they're very fluid, especially when you have candidates that really haven't 
proven themselves. The beauty of the American system is that people still appreciate someone who is sincere and has good ideas over someone who just spends a lot of money. So the fact is, J.B. Pritzker's, now he's spent $55 million, that lead that he has built up, even though he's probably still maybe winning by a little or has a decent amount of votes, in some ways that lead has evaporated a lot because it was just built up with advertising and he really didn't, um, he really didn't relate to people in a way that some of the other candidates have as being genuine. So this is where we stand today. And on the Republican side, many people had thought uh, Rahner is unbeatable, but even he, he, like I mentioned earlier in my speech, he's being challenged by a, a lady called Jeannie Ives. I think she's a state senator. She could be a state rep, I'm not sure. Maybe a state rep. But uh, a few months ago, this lady didn't seem to have a chance but now some people think she may even have a chance to be Rahner, who's not a billionaire, but is worth hundreds of millions of dollars, just because Rahner hasn't been true to the Republican base. So this is where we are today. Early voting started actually a Saturday, almost a full month before the election. Does anyone know why they have early voting in Illinois a full month before the election? Well, my opinion is it's because it helps incumbents. Because when you have early voting for a month, it gives someone with a lot of resources to get their people to go out and vote. If you're a new guy, not a lot of money, not a lot of resources, you don't have resources to drive every little old lady in your district to vote. So this is one thing you see in Chicago politics, but I don't think to be in. So in closing, folks, it looks like we have an election on our hands. And as I said, I really, I really think this election is turning out to be great just because it shows the beauty of the American system and how people can still see through a lot of the BS and end up maybe possibly picking who they think is the best candidate, even though one of the other candidates maybe has spent millions of dollars to try and buy the election. So thank you very much.